I am back for yet another edition of Awesome Stuff Week, sponsored by YouTube. This time, it's Awesome Stuff Unwrapped, with the theme of holiday gifts for others or that you can buy for yourself if you're into that sort of thing. And they've even got this experimental new ad unit that allows you to buy the item that's being featured through the video itself. Crazy, right? Anyway, Monday's focus for Awesome Stuff Unwrapped is right in my wheelhouse. You guessed it, makeup. Corsair's RMI series power supplies feature premium components for great performance with very low noise. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So I was racking my brain for an awesome tech gift and I went, you know what? I'm really tired of seeing people buy crappy headphones for each other. And when you combine that with the fact that I've never covered one of the Primo value audiophile headphones out there, the Sennheiser HD 598s, and the fact that they just launched a black SE variant, not to mention that we didn't have a lot of time to throw this video together and I already have a fair bit of experience with this product's very similar predecessor and we've got ourselves a recipe for a video. So let's take a look at today's prize filly. Inside the box you'll find the headphones themselves with a cleverly locking detachable 3 meter cord, a headphone jack adapter so you can use them with anything from your mp3 player to your standalone headphone amplifier, and in the case of the SE a shorter 1.2 meter cord that will likely be preferred by folks who want to use their new headphones with a portable music player. On that subject, at 50 ohms, the HD 598s are a little on the high impedance side to get the most out of them with any but the best portable amps, but with that said, I didn't find them entirely lifeless with my Xperia Z5 Compact to the point where I would entirely avoid them if you want to use them while you're on the go sometimes without a standalone powered amp. Not that most people are going to want to use the regular one while they're out and about anyway. I can't think of too many outfits that would go with this particular color scheme. So, I, I don't know, I guess it's hard for me to describe these physically any further other than to say that well, they're headphones. Uh, you'll find the 53 millimeter dynamic drivers angled strategically towards your ear canals in each cup surrounded by velour pads. There are two hinges. You got your up and down and your left and right to help the headphones fit on a variety of head shapes better. And then between the cushioned headband and the ear cups themselves is a regrettably plastic, but from my experience, still fairly robust size adjust mechanism. Enough about those though. What else will I be comparing them against? I still don't have an ABX listening setup, unfortunately, uh, part of the reason why you won't be seeing me evaluate any amps or DACs, which are much more difficult to tell from each other until that changes. So I am stuck with adjusting my listening levels to 80 decibels with a 1 kHz test tone, and then just switching between headphones and giving you guys my impressions. So I went with a higher end lower reference point in Sennheiser's signature sound, my old HD 555s and my daily driver HD 600s, and then to represent similar tier models from other popular manufacturers, I've got the K7XX from AKG and DT990 Pros from Bayer Dynamic. Let's talk fit first. Since nothing in my test suite today falls into the uncomfortable category, the HD 598 has its work cut out for it here. AKG's K7XX suspension and leather head strap system works really well because their massive ear cups allow sufficient clamping pressure to keep most of the weight off of the top of the head without pressure points. While both Sennheiser and Bayer Dynamic take a different approach here and feature velour cushioned ear cups and cushioned pleather headbands. Compared to the DT990s, I wouldn't say I like Sennheiser's approach better, but I'd call it more of a trade-off. For the headband, Sennheiser goes for a thicker kind of, you can actually hear it, air ride type system that I find doesn't distribute the weight on my head as well, but is by no means uncomfortable. And then again on the ear cups, the HD 598s use a firmer foam and a, a shallower velour that is comfortable, but kind of lacks the warm hug from a friend on my head effect. The flip side of that is that the HD 598s keep my head and ears cooler while I am listening. So from a comfort perspective, there's really no loser here, except I would say the K7XXs get edged out by both the DT990s and the 598s. But with that said, I can wear any of these models for hours without that, oh goodness, my head is finally free feeling once I remove them. 
Which actually leads to another super positive thing I noticed here. The last time I bought a new headphone, uh, my HD 600s were secondhand, from Sennheiser's open backed audiophile lineup was the HD 555s. And those things grabbed your head like a vice out of the box and only started fitting like a, a perfectly tailored glove after a few months. The 598s, on the other hand, are awesome out of the box. And while I'm actually comparing them to the 555s, in terms of build quality, they're similar, except that the plastic at the hinge here, which on my 555s cracked like so many others, seems to be a bit more robust. Let's get into how they sound. I used a light harmonic geek out for all listening today with my usual mix of top 40 music because that's what I listen to and so do a lot of people. In a nutshell, the HD 598s are worth every penny of what the non-SE model is going for at the moment, depending on where you're shopping, and even at their MSRP, you're not going to be, you know, upset that you got ripped off. Take that with a grain of salt from me, though, because I'll be the first to admit that I've always loved the Sennheiser sound signature, derisively referred to by people who don't like it as the Sennheiser Veil, because of the way their frequency response falls off a cliff in the high end. That has the undesired effect of reducing clarity or sparkle in the high range, but with poor quality recordings, pretty common thanks to the loudness war of audio mastering, it makes high frequency instruments particularly per percussion less fatiguing to listen to, which I personally prefer. By comparison, the K7XX and DT990 Pros do a better job of retaining details in the highs, with the DT990s also hitting the bass a bit harder, but not to the point where, you know, anything that I'm looking at today would be a bass head headphone either. Overall, I think the best way to describe the listening experience with the HD 598s is smooth and easy. And I, and I know those are stupid audiophile words that don't really tell you anything objectively, but if you were interested in objective data, then headphone.com is the place to go anyway. And honestly, I don't need that to reach the conclusion about this video. Compared to almost all of the more consumer-oriented headphones out there, even Sennheiser's own Urbanite line that did I did not get a positive review from me about a year ago, whether you go with the brown or black edition with the same internals, the HD 598s aren't going to knock your earrings out with thumping bass, but they're a bang for the buck winner. If you or someone you know is a budding audiophile who wants to listen to his or her music the way it was really meant to be listened to. Speaking of listening to, listen to me talk about iFixit. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, you guys can go to iFixit.com slash Linus and enter the code TECHTIPS at checkout. Well, hold on a second, Linus. What's iFixit? Why would I want to buy anything there? Ah, great question. If you've ever wanted to repair a tablet or a notebook computer or phone and you've been like, Best guide for repairing device X. The odds are excellent that you've ended up over on iFixit.com. They've got all kinds of fantastic guides for tearing down devices and repairing them, replacing batteries to get the most out of the stuff that you paid your good hard money for. And the thing that most people don't know and where the offer code comes in is that iFixit not only has these guides, but they've got all the tools you need. Suction cups, prying tools, tweezers, magnets, hard to find screwdriver bits, all that stuff available on their site. They've even, got, they even invented a tool to apply consistent heat directly to adhesive laden case components so you can get them apart. It's called the eye opener. Haha, <laughs> because it's for opening eye devices. Anyway, um, anyway, don't worry about the jokes or the product names. Worry about heading over to ifixit.com slash Linus and entering code tech tips at the checkout. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you just liked this video, you know what to do. You guys are so good at finding that button. That's what I like about you guys. But if you liked the video, hit the like button, get subscribed to the channel, and don't forget to even, wait, no, I lost my train of thought. Even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, instructions up there, buying a cool shirt like this one, or even with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum to get a cool little contributor badge. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, what should I watch next? So click that little bit. Button, button, click the button. Top right corner, check out the video where I build a router. Yes, let's go with that today.